Hello, class of 1995. My name is Jim Lomax. I'm currently president of the Baylor Alumni Association. I was a member of the class of 1971 and remained at Baylor as professor of psychiatry. I'm coming to you virtually because the COVID-19 pandemic forced Baylor to make the difficult decisions this past March to close our campus for now, as well as to cancel all events, including the wonderful celebration we planned and hoped to have with you. So we hope you appreciate that we are really sorry uh, we weren't able to celebrate this important milestone in person with you. We know so many of you would love to come back to Houston to honor your Baylor experience, to catch up with old friends, and learn the sort of strides that Baylor has made and is making since your time here. Today we hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy during this very, very challenging time. Like many of you, I've also felt a range of emotions, of appreciation for the work of our frontline co co colleagues who've really been challenged, and sadness for the havoc wreaked by COVID-19, and then pride at the way in which the whole medical community has responded to this pandemic and pulled together in an extraordinary way. I hope I'm speaking for all of us at Baylor when I say we are proud of you. We feel honored and privileged to count you among the students who came to Baylor to learn the science and art of medicine and to carry it out and translate it into the world. I'd like to reminisce briefly about some of the notable events that occurred during each class year who were represented at this reunion. In 1995, Pixar's Toy Story opened in theaters. eBay launched when the founder listed his laser printer for $1 online. The quote, Houston, we have a problem, was made famous by Tom Hanks in Apollo 13, and Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Mossette was the album of the year. Much has changed since you graduated, but the respect and awe for all facets of human health you brought to Baylor, as well as the medical expertise and scientific knowledge you gained here, have evolved but not changed. Your passion, hard work, and commitment to medicine shine as bright as it did when you graduated. Now, more than ever, our professions are being called to serve as beacons of hope. Clinicians, researchers, educators, you all exemplify how medical professionals can illuminate the path forward for people who otherwise may not have that guidance. Each of you has been lighting the way for those around you since you left Baylor. In your offices, your labs, or the classrooms, you lead. For your patients, your colleagues, your students, and your loved ones, you carry the torch. And Baylor is honored to have been a part of your success. We value you and your accomplishments and are so proud to celebrate this anniversary year with you. Again, I wish we could be together to celebrate the anniversary of your graduation from Baylor, but we'll offer our congratulations on reaching this milestone and for setting a shining example for others. Thank you, Dr. Lomax. Uh, it's great to see all of you. Unfortunately, it's virtual. Uh, as you probably know, we had a virtual graduation and now we're having an, a virtual alumni uh, event. Uh, but appreciate your participation and thanks so much. I wanted to catch you up uh, on uh, all the things that are related to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic that Baylor College of Medicine has been involved with. The first thing is our uh, Center for Microbiome uh, Research was the first in, uh, group to find out that the virus actually had an intermediate species. It went from bat to pangolin to humans. And uh, this was uh, Joe Petrosino's group. They found that the spike protein was uh, almost identical to a virus that's in pangolins. And so clearly the bat coronavirus acquired the spike protein uh, in pangolins and then it became aerosolized and infectious for people. Uh, it may still be that there's an intermediate um, step, but we don't know. But at least the first, uh, first identification that was uh, from Joe Petrosino's group. The other thing is we're very much involved with therapy. So uh, Peter Hotez's group has been working on a vaccine. Uh, this is a recombinant protein vaccine uh, to the spike protein with an adjuvant. He's one of the 14 uh, vaccine programs going and we're very excited about his work and he's about to enter into human trials for that. In addition to that, we've been leaders in, uh, in testing. 
uh, Tony Piedro's lab, uh, you know, in the in the flu vaccine unit, uh, started very early on in creating uh, a very strong and good test for uh, the uh, coronavirus nucleic acid. Uh, that came online very quickly. We we uh, created a much bigger lab for him and his uh, group has been able to ramp up to almost a thousand tests a day. Uh, we also brought on uh, Richard Gibbs's uh, center, the uh, Human Genome Center, and he's been able to use the, the equipment there and the uh, the automation to begin to uh, test up, up to 1,000, even up to as high as 5,000 tests a day. And as a result, we've been providing a lot of the backup for the city and also for the county. Uh, so when the county does mass testing, it comes into our institution now and we're, we've been the ones uh, uh, doing the tests. In addition to that, uh, Tony's group has, has developed a very, very good antibody assay, one that is 99% specific. And Texas is still kind of in a low prevalence state. We have a very, you know, quickly rising incidence of disease, but our prevalence is pretty low. And in, in that situation, as you know, it's very important to have a highly specific test so you don't have too many false positives. So we are about to start doing a surveillance test for the county where we can do both the RNA test, which will look at incidence, and the antibody test, which will look at prevalence. So we can begin to help the city and the county identify hotspots there are 30 mobile test sites and we want to be able to help the public health system identify where those mobile sites should go. And so, just so you know, you know Baylor College of Medicine is, is leading again uh, in even dealing with this. In addition to that, our clinical trials unit has participated in pretty much all of the important clinical trials. We've been involved with the convalescent serum study, uh, the remdesivir study, and the IL-6 inhibitor study. So, we are very much engaged in uh, trying to deal with this. And we've uh, had grants that given to many of our faculty to try and identify either pathogenesis or novel targets to be uh, treated. And that is through our uh, drug discovery group and Marty Matzik. So lots of stuff going on. You'd be very proud of your institution knowing that uh, we're addressing all aspects of this uh, uh, global pandemic in a way you'd be proud of. Uh, Interestingly enough, uh, we have also been, we're a company just like everybody else, we've had to scale back. We were basically, uh, we never closed our doors, but we basically restricted our activities to about 25% from the very beginning. We had to reduce our, our mouse colony, we had to reduce the number of investigators. Our students left the wards for a while. Uh, we had to close down uh, a lot of the activities, elective surgery, and even our clinic visits. But slowly but surely, we're opening back up. Uh, our clinical mission is sort of leading in that regard. We're almost up to 50 to 60% of our previous volumes. And so far, we've been showing by surveillance testing that there's been no transmission between patient and provider or between providers. So we're, we're doing a lot of surveillance to make sure uh, that that doesn't happen. Our students are now back on the wards and I'm very grateful to our affiliates for permitting that. Uh, and they need to learn about this as well. Obviously, this is uh, very dangerous for everyone, but it's also a wonderful learning experience for, for our students. Our scientific efforts are starting back. It's a little bit slower. Uh, paradoxically, we, we spend so much time compressing everybody so we'd be very efficient in labs. That makes it very difficult for us to behave in the new uh, COVID world where we try to have social distancing. And so you can imagine we've had to go through every bench and create six foot radiant circles so that we can protect our, our people in the labs uh, from transmission. So that's going a little bit slower. We're at about 25 to 35% of our previous activities. But the good news is, uh, as always, we uh, were aggressive at applying for grants. We've received over 25 NIH grants to study COVID-19. Uh, so we're, on the one hand, we're slowing up, but on the other hand, we're getting a lot of grants uh, to, to try and ad address uh, uh, the global pandemic. So on the educational side, we're, we're doing a lot more virtually. Uh, our admissions process will be virtual. Our residence uh, uh, interview process will be virtual. You can imagine how difficult it is. That one, the one really amazing thing that has uh, dramatically accelerated is our clinics have become virtual. So. Uh, telehealth, that something that was very slow to evolve in medicine is now rampant and it's actually going very well. 
we went from having no telehealth visits to having 12,000 in one month. So it's, it's, it's fascinating to watch uh, the impact of this uh, pandemic. And I think the telehealth thing will probably stay with us a long time. Patients love it, actually. Our patient approval is over 90% uh, for their telehealth visits. And uh, so I think that's going to be a big part of our, our new primary care. I wanted to bring one thing up to you that's really, really important. As you know, uh, I'm coming from you uh, today from the Cullen Building. My office is, uh, is president's in the, is, is in the Cullen Building. Fantastic, beautiful Art Deco building. Uh, first building on the Texas Medical Center and was uh, added to the historic registry a few years ago. Uh, and it is a great historic building and it is totally inappropriate for training a modern medical uh, student and, or, or graduate student for that matter. And what we're, we're planning on doing is building a brand new educational building that will combine all of our schools uh, and will be, allow us to do a lot more virtually, a lot more simulation, uh, it will be much more on the small group learning, case-based learning. Uh, we're very excited about that. We hope to put that in the TMC3 project, which is the de new development on the other side of the bayou, right next to the McNair campus. That is going to be a biotech hub. We have two buildings planned there, uh, our education building and a population health building, sort of our big data science building. They're actually joined together because we want our students to have projects in population health as they walk in the door. So they're already learning about how to manage populations and deal with big data sets. Uh, that's going to be the most exciting thing that happens for this institution probably in the next 50 years. Uh, it's really important because like the Cullen Building, it'll be the sort of first building on the, what's the new part of the Texas Medical Center, what they're calling now the Central Campus. And when you think about it, it's ideal for us. It's our 36-acre McNair campus where our adult clinical activities are, right across the street from the VA where we are also present, and then it'll be our medical school building. We will continue to stay on this campus, but most of it will be our wet lab space. So we have two and a half million square feet of space that's really wet lab, but will remain on this campus with most of our clinical and educational uh, activities going over to the other side of the bio, to the TMC3 uh, and the McNair campus. I'm very excited about that. We have really cool pictures. I will be sending a lot of this out to you in the future by email, so don't throw away all those emails that we send you. Uh, and hopefully you'll get excited about it and want to participate. On behalf of the Baylor College of Medicine community, thank you, class of 1995, for preserving Baylor's legacy and for your commitment to our school and to your profession. Thank you.